I recently participated in the Core Invitational 2.0, which was a month-long game jam in which you had to make a game in the Core Game Engine or Core Editor. And my game was called Ant Colony, made in collaboration with another very talented core creator named Madlios. He handled all of the art and a bit of the scripting, and I handled all most of the scripting. So, in this video, I will go over the core editor, its pros, its cons, and talk about it in light of my Roblox developer experience. So stay tuned to hear my opinions about that. If you're interested in playing the game, the link will be in the description. And like the video if you enjoy, subscribe to my channel for more Roblox content and potentially core content. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So Core is a user-generated content platform, just like Roblox is, so they provide a free editor, they provide a one-click publishing system, and all you have to do is make a game. It uses the Lua scripting language, just like Roblox, and a lot of the key features are similar to Roblox. One really nice thing is the Core editor is built on top of Unreal Engine. Actually, the entire engine is built on top of Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine 4. So that means that we as like indie game developers have all of the professional established tooling that all of the AAA games have access to via Unreal Engine. And it's all completely free, which is really, really nice. Overall, the core editor was a pleasure to use. I've used Unreal Engine 4 and I somewhat enjoyed their editor and just the engine in general, but the core editor was so nice. So one of the key benefits was their template system. So anything in core, you can like create and then save it as a template. Templates are similar to models and like packages in Roblox, except they're basically just Unity prefab. So if you ever use Unity, it's basically a Unity prefab. And what that means is, like for example, I have my ant template. I can just like drag it in. It'll place it on the map and it has everything that I need. It's like a folder basically and just has everything that encompasses the ant. And the cool thing about these templates is that I can sync them between scenes and I can spawn them dynamically. And they're just big packages of instances that you can just move around so i have all my templates in another scene so let me just load the scene and i can go to like my ant template real quick so here are all my templates and i can edit them and then the changes will be reflected into the game without any further notice the, that's one weird thing about roblox is you have to bring things in and out of server storage if you really want to edit them in the in the studio. You could use packages, but packages are very clunky and not very good to use. They just don't feel nice. So the template system is a lot better. And I have all of my templates down here. And you can also get templates from a community content area, which is considerably better than Roblox's toolbox, that's for sure. The stuff here is very, very helpful. A lot of like, the big things in core use a lot of community content like this npc ai kit a lot of big games use it and you can look into the code and the code is actually helpful if you want to learn how to script in core just take a couple of the community content scripts or whatever and just read them and you can learn about them and up to this point i haven't seen any viruses or any talk about viruses to be honest I think the community is just a little more mature and people aren't going to do stuff like that. The properties in like the core editor are also quite nice. It gives you the ability to add custom properties out of the box and they can be all sorts of data types like you can reference other core objects or you can do like a whole number of things with numbers, strings, colors, just a ton of stuff. And I really enjoy it. it. It's honestly a lot better than Roblox's attribute system. 
because it has more data types and it came like with the editor attributes we had to wait forever to get them and these custom properties are just a lot simpler and a lot more integrated and just honestly a lot better in my opinion one issue with core that i have is the preview playtest system so let me load back the main scene because when i like press play in the editor I get a different experience than if I were to boot it up in the game. So here there's like zero delay from like server to client. And so everything is like simulated all on my computer. And I don't think there's even like a virtual server or client. I think everything's all together, which is kind of annoying because it means that the game running in this little window will run quicker than it will in an actual game. Which is fine because they also have a multiplayer preview mode where you can just play with like one or more players and that's nice. It's just there was no mention ever or there probably was but I just didn't see it and it wasn't made very clear to me that this playtest, this native playtest was different than the actual gameplay. Because in Roblox when I press play in the game it's more or less simulating a multiplayer game with one player playing. Or at least it's what I think is going on. With this, it's kind of fooling you. It's kind of just more for like basic tiny tests. So you have to use the multiplayer preview mode. That's one thing that I was just confused about. One thing I really liked was the idea of network context. So let me just make a new scene to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So you can add these things in core called network context so i can create a network context there's client server and static so these are basically like saying like starter player and roblox for new client context server storage and server script service for a new server context and static context is similar to replicated storage and the workspace if i were to say that the cool, really cool thing about these is that you can like nest them within each other. So for example, I can create a new folder and then inside of this folder, I can put a client context and a server context. And what this allows me to do is put all my server code logic into the server context and the client context, I can put all of the visuals, like for example, in my ant the ant visuals and animations are stored in the client context while the scripts, the AI scripts are stored in the server. And that leads to your projects being a lot more organized and a lot more flexible to organize. You notice how there's no top level services in the editor. I could literally delete everything and it'll let me do that. So there's nothing here now. And you can configure your project to your liking which is quite nice on the other hand scripting in core was kind of a pain so first of all their naming scheme is a little bit different than roblox so i came into a lot of instances where i was typing like vector 3 dot new with a lowercase n and it just was not working it's because you have to use uppercase for like dots but then sometimes you have to use lowercase they have a very well established naming convention so that's not really a downside it's just it took me as a roblox developer time to get used to i also had to implement a lot of like weird unidiomatic counterintuitive solutions like for example i had to make a like busy polling method to wait for a mouse update because there's no such thing as a remote function or like a client request or server request. So like there's only events. You can only broadcast events from player to, from server to player or player to server. So I just had to wait until the mouse update happened, which was kind of annoying. But I mean, you can get past that. One thing I did really enjoy was first of all the ability to get my code into vs code in the first place core provides a couple extensions including the core lua api and it also like links with the lua language server which makes the vs code editing experience honestly quite nice and the fact that i can go into the editor 
and tell it that I want my default editor to be Visual Studio Code is just amazing. Speaking of that, all of the objects in Core are synced to the file system. So me and my partner had a GitHub repository where we could push everything to GitHub and stay synced with each other. And Core did not have to build any special tool to do so. Like Roblox has Team Create, which is a mess. All of the professional game studios all use Roho and GitHub, yet Roblox still finds the need to keep on expanding their editor and keep on expanding their own built-in tools when there are already better third-party tools that do the same thing. Like, I think the core default editor is decent, but it's not anything to be like proud of. But the fact that they just let you use VS Code off the bat is just so freaking nice. I absolutely love it. One thing they do have going for them is the documentation is very, very good. I enjoy it. It's simple. It has everything I need for all the functions, all of the properties, and it's easy to navigate. On par with Roblox, which is a crazy compliment because they have the best documentation that I've ever seen, in my opinion. Another issue with the scripting, and one thing I'm worried about for the platform just as it goes forward, is the existence of many very, very, very specific classes and functions and properties that bloat the API and make um, doing a lot of simple things an issue. So for example, this weapon class here, this is what I used to sort of creatively to try to get my pheromone placer thing. Like pheromones are little markers that you see when like you want to guy the ant somewhere. I used a weapon. It's really meant for guns and stuff, which really annoyed me. They have a weapon class and they have like an ability class, but there's no just basic tool. So I have to take a very specific instance that covers a very small scope of use cases and try to broaden it, which is significantly harder than doing the other way around, taking a broad concept and narrowing it down to what I'm doing. So like I had to make the weapon hit scan, turn off burst count, shots per second, and turn off all the recoil, which wasn't that hard, but the fact that I had to use like, something this complex for something so simple just really annoyed me. And back to the other like busy pulling example I was talking about, I used a ability for this. An ability is just something, it's basically like a tool, right? Except one thing is, is I wanted to get mouse input but it was giving me mouse input as if the camera was in a like third person view. So when I wanted to get the actual mouse position in 3D space, I'd use actually a UI function, UI get a cursor hit, hit result to send that to the server, which is really annoying. I don't know why they don't have more broad classes. And it honestly just sets a bad precedent because the API will get bloated. It'll take them longer to develop because when they make these very specific things, they can't really iterate on the platform as quickly. And my question is, is since the Community content is so strong in core. Why can't they just let the community make specific weapon classes like this? Just implement them in Lua. Because I don't think it would be that bad. One benefit from the system, for example, like being built in, is the AI system. It's in its fledgling stage right now, but I used it. And honestly, I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty simple. But the fact that I could like edit the activities in this handler while the game was running was so nice. Because... Since it was built, like, baked into the native editor, I did not have to touch, like, make my own debug system. They already had it ready for me out of the box, which was quite nice, especially since the ants had a lot of AI. But the ants themselves, there's no kinematic body or just basic movement, like, body in core. You have to make your own. So I had to make an ant, give it gravity. I had to re-implement gravity on my own. So if I go back to the script and we find, like, let's just go to a client activity. This this is what happened. Like, I had to implement my own collision so the ant wouldn't phase through walls. It was just 
kind of annoying that I had to do all of this when Unreal Engine literally has a kinematic body. I've used it. It's a great thing, and they have a decent physics engine, but no, I can't get to it because we have a player that probably uses a kinematic body. For some reason, I can't get to it. But tell me why we don't have a basic class, like a kinematic body, just to, like make basic stuff, yet we have a four-wheeled vehicle. There is a class in core called a four-wheeled vehicle. That's just crazy to me. The fact that they make it so inflexible to make just straight-up vehicles and stuff like that, yet they don't have very broad classes or, like, broad joints or anything, just really annoys me. Because what this does in the end is it just narrows down on creativity. You won't be able to make a special game and a special genre with Core if it does not provide the exact specific things that you need to do it. Or if you do, it'll be a lot harder. Like this game, this game was not within Core's subset of genres that it supports, basically. Like FPS, Battle Royale, uh, third-person shooter, racing game, stuff like that. And I understand that they'll add it, add more stuff in the future. But game making, and especially user-generated content game making, is supposed to be a very creative and innovative process. When you can't innovate on your own and have to rely on the engine itself to release updates for you to innovate with, it just makes it very hard for people to A, develop games that are crazy and cool, and B, for people to get into the platform if all of the games are exact carbon copies of each other with different art. One massive benefit of Core is the monetization model. Developers in Core receive like 50% of the profits, where in Roblox you only get about 25%, which is a significant difference. But the weird thing is, is that Core is built on Unreal, so it targets high specs. But its audience wants to be like 13 year olds and above, but really most of the people who play Core seem like they're younger because they play all the simple games. So Core is in a weird place where right now, because you can't develop a lot of unique game genres, you have mobile games basically on PC for high-end PCs, which is what I see it as right now. There are good games on Core, but just not many people play them because the kids who play the games on good PCs just are not interested in them. So the demographic that they're targeting is in a really odd place, and the people there just aren't really meshing well with what they're doing but eventually they'll release core to console and console players are huge that'd be a big boost to the platform so right now i would not recommend using core because it forces your creativity down to a select couple genres like i said earlier battle royale shooters racing games and like maybe an rpg or two however core is updating very rapidly every couple of weeks or so so all of this information may not be relevant in a couple of months and i kind of hope it isn't because i enjoy the platform and i think at the very least it'll make roblox scared and provide a little competition since they've had a monopoly on the user generated content industry for a very long time it doesn't mean i'll be going away from roblox anytime soon it's just i hope they'll give de their developers a little more money and a little more tools and just make studio a little bit better so that would be great if that could happen. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to my channel, and put any questions or flame me in the comments below because this is my opinion. You can deny me or you can disagree with me. I don't really care. But thank you for listening to my rant, and that's all I have. Bye.